Good morning and welcome to BeefLink TV, your daily dose of industry information. This morning I'm joined by Denise Hill and we're here today to talk about the Lower Thames Crossing project. This is a project that will affect all members. First of all, thank you for joining us, Denise. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you, Natalie. Good. And I understand that you recently attended a parliamentary reception on the Lower Thames Crossing project recently. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, of course. So, um, thank you. Uh, we were um, pleased to be invited to an event organised by Logistics UK uh, with a local member of parliament um, in the sort of Dartford area. Um, and we went along to hear more about this crossing. So... Effectively, as many people know, uh, Dartford, the Dartford crossing is incredibly unreliable and very congested. And as it's one of the strategic roads in the UK for anybody moving any freight whatsoever from the southeast ports, it is really a, a, a key route sure. um, for any products and services coming into the UK uh, from Europe. Um, the Lower Thames Crossing is um, a project that is going to be uh, that is being designed to have uh, a new tunnel that has three lanes of traffic in in either direction. Currently, there are the two tunnels and the bridge. The bridge will get closed if it's too windy. Uh, and one of the other tunnels get, gets closed every 15 minutes to allow abnormal loads or those loads with dangerous goods um, right. on them to to actually go through. So there's, there's quite a bit of disruption anyway, um, but also, uh, you know, currently the, 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 the current uh, tunnels and bridge were designed for around about 135,000 vehicles a day, but about 180,000 are going through on a regular basis. Wow. So it's not surprising that it's, um, that it's congested. Sure. And, you know, if you can't go through, you've got a hundred mile diversion around the M25. But I think What's key for when you say all members and not just those in in the southeast, the Lower Thames Crossing will link Essex and Kent, and will allow those those goods coming north. So particularly, um, you know, if they're coming out of Dover or Folkestone to come up uh, through Kent and Essex, and then join up with the key roads going going north to the Midlands sure. uh, and and further on. Um, so it's actually uh, will be really beneficial for anybody uh, moving freight um, in that area. Um, but also the key thing they, that they want to do with the project is, you know, just build some re resilience in the area and build the connectivity for the for, for the road network. Um, the project's also going to be a, a low carbon um, construction project where they're going to be phasing out diesel and using hydrogen instead which i think is is really quite interesting mm. and 80 percent of the new road if it gets approved will be below ground um so yeah it's it's a huge huge project Sounds and it was great to, to 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 be there um and listen to what people had to had to say um and in terms of sort of like economic um impact on the country um, it's estimated that we lose about £200 million worth a year of goods just stuck in traffic. Wow. Yeah, which is which is huge. Um, and the Lower Thames uh, project would, uh, they, the, the project team believe, at a £40 billion uh, pound boost to the economy. So it's, it's pretty, pretty important, really. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so when is work likely to take place? Like when to start and how long do you think works would take from what you've been told? OK, so... Um, from a planning perspective, um, it's going. Uh, a, there's a, a DCO or development consent order that's in place, and a decision is due on that by the fourth of October. If that is successful, uh, then uh, the project team believe they can get the spades in the ground really quite quickly. Probably start at starting work early 25, and then it'll, it should be finished by 2032. Wow. So it is a long-term project, yeah. but they're excuse the pun, there could be light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or three tunnels. <laughs> so, yeah, huge projects ahead of us. It is. Absolutely we'll be making huge. sure that through the parliamentary receptions and other sessions that we get involved in, we'll keep our members up to date on what's going on. Absolutely. So I think that that's the thing. Once we know whether the consent order has gone through, then we know what we know what that the project will go ahead sure. and then from there we will be in close contact with the team to uh, to keep updated and update our members accordingly that's great thank you very much denise thank you that's all for today's episode of beefling tv your daily dose of industry information